Today I want to talk a bit about what data look like. A data set is a collection of information on attributes or variables for different units, which we call observations. As you can see in Table 2.1, the units in this data set are people. The data set records several attributes for each individual. We have name, gender, age, major, and GPA. Note that there are lots of things about these people that we have not measured, like eye color or hair color or height. Variables can be represented by words or numbers. The way that we deal with numbers and words in a statistical model is different, but we've got plenty of time to cover those topics later. There is also no one right way to represent information in a data set. We could just as easily use the format in Table 2.2 to convey the information. Here, instead of gender having words, male and female, there are numbers, 1 and 2. Notice here that the numbers do not convey magnitude or even order in this case. It's not the case that males are twice as much something as females or that females rank higher than males. It just identifies different groups. Okay, so you got one wrong. That's not a big deal. Just remember that in a data set, the rows are the observations. So in this case, Jenny is an observation because Jenny identifies a row in a data set. The heading uh, in the column, for example, name, would represent a variable. So the observation Jenny contains all of the data that corresponds with the row labeled Jenny. The last slide leads us into a nice discussion of levels of measurement. Level of measurement tells us what kind of information a variable conveys. The levels of measurement are ordered by how much information they convey about the observations. The first level of measurement we'll talk about is nominal. Nominal measures, like gender, identify different groups. They do not convey ordering or any information about magnitude differences between observations. Nominal measures could just as easily be represented with words as with numbers. In fact, they often are represented by words. For example, province in which you were born would be a nominal variable. The next level of measurement we'll talk about is ordinal. Ordinal measures are like nominal measures, but the categories have an inherent rank ordering. Letter grades are a good example of ordinal measures. We know if you got an A that you did better than somebody who got a B, but we don't know whether it was two points better or 10 points better. We could represent ordinal variables with numbers or letters because letters have an inherent ordering. Another example of an ordinal variable would be your impression of your country's economic performance over the last year. You could say it's gotten better stayed the same or gotten worse. We know if you said it got better that you think it was better than the people who said it stayed the same, but not quite by how much. Next, we have interval level measures. Interval level measures are those that convey not only order, but distance between values. In interval level measures, there is no fixed zero. That means we could add or subtract something from the variable, and it would convey precisely the same information. The quintessential example here is temperature. We can just as easily express temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but it means the same thing in terms of what it feels like outside. Finally, we have ratio measures. Ratio measures are those that convey distance between values 
but they have a fixed zero. Good examples here are time or money. We could measure time in hours, minutes, or seconds, but in all cases, zero means exactly the same thing. No time has elapsed. Similarly, with money, we could measure wealth in Canadian dollars or US dollars, but in either case, zero means the same thing. Another example of a ratio variable is any variable that is a measure of the number of things. For example, the number of kids you have, the number of times you've left the country, uh, or anything else like that. We can talk about these variables in different ways. We sometimes would say that nominal and ordinal measures are qualitative or categorical. And we could say that interval and ratio measures are also referred to as numerical, continuous, or quantitative. These are different ways that we can talk about the same kinds of properties.